Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Short Explanations Podcast. My name is Hi. I'm Tom is in the third corner, not the other half. And we have Info, InfoSec Sherpa joining us again. And she has some grind, uh, gears to grind. Is that what we're calling it? Not to like take that, the copyright. Yeah. So what is our what is our complaint or what are we talking about today? Uh, well, I guess I wanted to kind of talk about not a little bit of complaining, but also just more helpfulness about the upcoming hacker summer camp. Um, you know, I have good things to say, but I also have some some warnings and some of my own, um, you know, things that stick in my craw, as someone said 100 years ago. <laughs> well, as an insider of DEF CON, because everyone does know I work for the Cryptography and Privacy Village, I have a lot of, I have a lot of feelings, but I try not <laughs> to make them known because because I want everyone to have a good time. And every year I have the same complaints. So I'll let you start. Okay. And I will try to be not terrible about it. Got it. Okay. So, uh, so again, hi everyone. I'm Tracy Maylee from Fosek Sherpa. And I have lots of thoughts and, and opinions. <laughs> it's what I should, that should be my tagline now. I have thoughts and lots of thoughts and opinions. So uh, first let's just start by our, by saying our community puts, I, I can say this now, I've been in the community for like six years, seven years now, and I can definitely see a lot clearly now how much emphasis we put on Hacker Summer Camp. And I think it's a little bit too much. I, I think that, that newbies, because I, I went through this myself, newbies feel like it is the be all end all that we have to get there, that it's going to be crucial for our careers and things. And as we were just mentioning before, before we came on air, I mean, I scrimped and saved and did everything I could to self fund my first trip out there. And, you know, it, it wasn't a great experience because doing Las Vegas on a budget, if you've ever just gone to Vegas in general on a budget, isn't, isn't a great experience, I would say. Maybe some people beg to differ. Um, just as a quick side note, the year that I went to my first hacker summer camp, um, my flight was delayed for five hours on the tarmac in Philly. Um, so yeah, we sat in the August heat for five hours on a plane. They wouldn't take us back to the terminal. And then it was still a five hour flight after that. So I spent 10 hours on this Southwest flight. <laughs> and I literally read an entire book, the Tara Wheeler book, uh, whose the name is escaping me at the moment. I read it cover to cover because I had 10 hours to do nothing on this plane. Um, and another further side note is the couple sitting next to me had only purchased a one-way ticket because they were planning on winning the money to fly home while they were there. And yeah. <laughs> It's like, and what if you don't win? <laughs> and so you made two mistakes there. Do you know what those two mistakes are? Taking Southwest and Talking not flying. No, oh. no, not <laughs> flying out of Newark. Why? Why would I fly out of Newark? For the same reason, I won't fly out of Philly. But that's a different well, story. That that's the, that was the one time that happened yeah. to me. I know that's not bash yeah. on my home airport. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, no, I, um, I fly out of Newark. Think about that. I, I, I enjoy Newark airport, which I'll, means I like I'll, the punishment. Yes. I'll fly out of Newark uh, for international. If there's not a nonstop out of Philly. Um, so like, for example, when I went to South Africa, I wanted to take Virgin. Uh, so it was, it was easier for me to do, to do Newark to London, London to, Johannesburg. So, anywho, um, but I, I think that we, we as a community and an industry, we're, you know, really, because you know those are two separate things, really just put a lot of emphasis on Hacker Summer Camp. When honestly, my most uh, worthwhile conference experiences and really learning and just, just overall, just really good experiences were at the smaller cons, L you know, like Security B sides and. I'm not counting B-Sides Las Vegas in, in that because that has become its own, you know, gigantic thing. It's still, it, it's, it's, 
it's still worth it. I'm not saying anything bad about it. I'm just saying that to me, that's kind of grown into into behemoth status as it. So I I don't know that newbies are really getting the right direction of um, of you know which conferences they should be going to first. In hindsight, I think I think you should work your way up to Hacker Summer Camp. I think you need to you know go to a couple B sides, go to some other events uh also so you can compare and contrast because if if the only infosec conference you ever know is in las vegas i mean it's gigantic and you you only get a, a morsel of what's offered and in that regard especially if you're self-paying then it seems kind of a waste in a way because you're really only getting a tiny piece of it whereas if you went to a b-side in you know and say like you know uh, where's Savannah, Georgia, or uh, Chicago, or something like that, you're really going to get a, a, a much more robust experience, in my opinion, just from a, I'm, I'm just from a smaller con, there's other cons out there that are small, not just B-sides, but, uh, so that's my, that's my first thing, and then just an offshoot of that is, I haven't seen much of it in the past few years, I think COVID kind of change that but i don't know if you if you recall or if i just kept seeing this because it annoyed me um about i would say maybe may or so you'd start to see people on twitter begging for money all of a sudden everybody had and i'm kind of I'm exaggerating here by saying everybody um so many people would have these gofundmes or these kickstarters of you know help me get to vegas help me get to defcon and all this stuff and that really bothered me because for a couple of reasons. One, there was this one person in, in particular uh, was begging daily for money. And then one one day I happened to catch a, a post that she did. Uh, I never remember. This was Twitter back when it was still normal and not uh, the X zone or whatever it is now. Um, she posted uh, like a pallet of LaCroix uh, beverages like in their heyday when they were still really expensive now you can get them a lot cheaper but that she she said that she bought and i'm thinking looking at this going if you can afford a pallet of la Croix, why are you panhandling you know for and that just drove me nuts and i it irritates me when people don't see hacker summer camp as professional development in yourself um you know and i get it some people genuinely don't have the money to do it and i'm not shaming anyone for for asking but it's when you you see the people like the one that i mentioned sending the mixed signals and it's like well you know you could have invested that in yourself instead of soda <laughs> and and gone there so i just i just feel like in general it kind of sends the wrong message when there's so many people uh you know basically you know panhand digital panhandling and i just i just feel like it's just not a good message and it's not you know, do you really value it then if if people paid for your trip? Are you really appreciative and valuing it? Because believe me, I've come across many scholarship winners, you know, f uh, at, at com not just not just this conference, but even in library world. I've come across scholarship winners who basically were like, oh, OK, yeah, I'll, I'll go to this one thing and then I'm going to go tour the city. And that just really, that just really ir irritates me. That, that, as we say, grinds my gears. <laughs> well, it's copywritten, I think, to Family Guy. So I don't want to. Oh, I, okay. Sorry. I don't want to. Yeah. Do <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think we're going to get a takedown really? there. But... Well, so I don't think Sticks in My Craw is copyrighted or yeah. trademarked. So. Well, so well, I good. have self funded DEF CON every year because mm -hmm. my, my employer needs a real receipt. And. And we got to we got we got on fighting terms where I sent Janet from the IRS. So Janet actually does work for DEF CON as the IRS person. So there is a yeah. Janet. And I sent the IRS to my employer and they said, How can we help get this person to DEF CON? And then the following year they DEF CON did their um their their you can pay online. Um but because I work for the cryptography and privacy village, I do get a free badge, which for DEF CON, it, it's, it wasn't supposed to be expensive, the $350. I, I'm flying out of Newark, so that's a five-hour flight. That's 
five, six hundred dollars, and then you have the hotel. I'm by myself. Now there are ways to do it, and I've done it. I've done the cheap thing. Vegas is not cheap, like not at all. It's terrible. But yeah. but but you know that you want to go to this, and and what I really wish DefCon would do, and they're never going to do this because it's bad business. Is this is like I, I don't want to gatekeep, but if a thousand people didn't show up, like I wouldn't miss them. I'd be like, if you can't afford it, you shouldn't go. Like you said, it's to bring professional development to yourself. If you want the spectacle, go to Vegas. If you want a spectacle, if you want to learn something, come and see what there is. And I don't want to stop anybody from who, who's like, Hmm, I kind of like, that was me. That was me. DEFCON 23. That was me. I'm curious. I want to go. I was, I, I was ready. I paid for it and I took it all in and it was overwhelming, but I enjoyed myself. And I did the exact opposite. I went to DEF CON first and then I went to ShmooCon, which which I thought I would like. It's in DC, it's nearby. I just didn't like it. And I think it was because I was too spoiled by that giganticness of everything compared to the Marriott in DC where everyone is self-contained. And I didn't know anybody. It's it a, was it's a Hilton, but the, oh, it's it's a Hilton, it's yeah. the Washington Hilton. Yeah. It's <laughs> the one where Reagan was uh, had the assassination attempt. Oh, okay. I didn't even stay there. I stayed like some something across the street because oh. it was cheaper because I had to pay for everything. And Tom's going to tell us about his favorite conference. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, formerly favorite conference, now that it doesn't really exist anymore, which was DerbyCon. And I love DerbyCon because it was super local, right? It was Louisville, Kentucky. I could drive there. I worked in Cincinnati, Ohio. It was literally over the river and you drive a little bit further. And congrats, you're at Derby. I spoke um, at the very last DerbyCon. Oh, nice. I didn't get the opportunity to go to the very last one, and I, I kind of actually regret that. I loved DerbyCon when it was a thing. So on on the professional development front, I mean, I I love conferences as much as anyone. I love, you know, the, the 24, 7 by 3 or 4 day party nature of the thing. I love friend EAs. Uh, I, I love hanging out with a bunch of like-minded hacker folk. But if you're into this for pure personal development, learning, watching conference talks, etc., you know, especially for bigger conferences that have the you know, production teams and they post the stuff online pretty regularly, what do you really get out of paying a whole bunch of money to go? I mean, what in from a professional development standpoint, is there anything the conference itself where you have to be there in person that you're not going to pick up from reading and watching all of the the hype around an event like defcon or even derbycon for that i mean derbycon well, posts all their stuff really quickly that's the rub and you're hit yeah that's the thing is that the the benefit to go to these things the big conferences is for the the people aspect for the the social networking aspect of it but then you have this industry filled with so many socially inept people <laughs> And I'm I'm not trying to be mean, but I, you know, I experienced this in library world too. You, that's the reason why you go to these events is to socialize. And then you know, you hear you hear people say like, oh, I'm just I stay in my room the whole time. I don't go to any, you know, it's like or so I guess uh, was it is it DefCon where like if you stay in a certain hotel, you can watch it. In the yeah, room all the Caesars TV. properties. You That's can right. Them. I knew there's one of them. Yeah. yeah, so I hear people say, that. like, then why, why, why go? You're supposed to be getting out there and meeting people. And so, yeah, that's to me, that's the whole weird, like, just rub of this whole thing is like, it's the best value is just to get out there and network with people and talk to people. But then there's so many people that don't know how to to do social things, and it, yeah, and it just turns out to be a lot of people standing in lines not talking to each other <laughs> you know to to see a talk that they probably could have watched from home uh so yeah i don't know i my i have complicated feelings about it i mean last year i spoke i think at seven different times in one week i had seven different sessions that i was speaking at i do not recommend that uh, that was and I, that's also why I, I didn't plan on going this year's because I was exhausted. Um, but okay, now I want to say this, and I don't want it to sound conceited, but I have a point to make about the social aspect. So 
what I have discovered um, is that like when you're recognizable, it turns into a very different social experience there. Um, it's hard to have conversations with people. Um, I, I don't want to name who it was because I didn't clear it before, uh, ahead of time with her, but I was in a hallway at DEF CON speaking to a friend of mine and we kept getting interrupted. People were just not even saying excuse me, just kind of like busting in to, you know, to say hi. And I apologized to her. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't, you know, and she's like, I'm used to, because her, her significant other is someone who's, who's recognizable in our world. And she just kind of, you know, rolled her eyes and was like, I'm used to it from him. And I'm like, but, but the, you shouldn't be treated like that. Like, I should be able to stand in a hallway and talk to someone without people just, bust. I mean, some people were polite, but other people were just like, just kind of busting into the conversation. So that's, that's what I mean is that it's a, it's a social networking event with, with a lot of people who don't necessarily have exceptional social skills. And that's why it, for me, it gets a little exhausting because I'm like, I just want to talk to these people and, uh, and not have it be, you know, not have, have it take a half an hour for like a five minute conversation. Uh, so yeah, it's, I, I don't know. I said, I'm, pl I'm pleased. Don't, I don't want anybody to think I'm bashing these conferences. I just think I, I look at it as a, in a different way now. And also having presented now over the years, I, I've seen it very differently. Um, yeah, so I, I just, so and some of the other things I was going to mention is, yeah, I, I, I just like the, the begging part. Um, I, I just, I just think that sends a wrong message. Um, you know, yeah, and you were mentioning about like about DerbyCon. I was shocked when my talk was accepted <laughs> to DerbyCon because I thought that it was an all technical sort of conference. And I mean, I even had people say to me like, oh, you're never going to speak at DerbyCon. You're not technical enough. And uh, so just because I knew it was the last one, that's why I submitted my empathy as a service to create a culture of security talk. And when I remember asking when I got there about it, uh, so one of the, the conference people said to me, well, yeah, this is the audience that needs to hear your talk. I'm like, that's what I thought. <laughs> Um, but I will say though, at, at, at DerbyCon is also where I had the experience of, I was literally wearing my speaker lanyard and a, I'm sorry, a white male came up to me and said, where did you get that online or something? I'm like, no, I'm actually a speaker. No, really? Did you, did you get that online from somewhere? I'm like. I am actually a speaker at this conference <laughs> and yeah, so that's, yeah, so that's great. Yeah. I am not, Yikes. The, if you, uh, there's, if you ask a lot of women who've presented at InfoSec conferences, yeah, you'll hear the same stories. Yeah. Literally wearing a speaker lanyard, we will still get questioned whether or not, is that lanyard really yours? Did you get it somewhere? Yeah. Um, Whitney I had that. Yeah. So Whitney was the, is was the head of the crypto village, and we would get journalism, journal uh, the press to come in, and yeah. they would say, and I have an orange badge, so I'm considered an organizer. Uh, is there someone we can talk? They would approach her, and they would say, "Hey, uh, who's in charge?" And and she would go, "I am." And and they would go to Whitney and say, "No, no, no, no. who's the." who is the who's really in charge as in yeah. she was the spokesperson and not the person in charge and and that i'm i want to say that that's stopping but it's not no it's... like i i want to say that over the years it has gotten better but it has not and and it, it is it is a blight on 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 everything and defcon's trying i mean they do have codes of conduct and they have but it's just so big they can't monitor every single corner and the thirty thousand people that are going to show up in order to to solve all these problems it's it's just well, i think as an industry we need to get better at that and well so i don't know all the details but um so for example so this is why representation and diversity is important 
right, to get people used to seeing, you know, people with ovaries at conferences <laughs> and people with skin color that's not white at conferences. Um, or, you know, you know what I mean, just, yeah. but, um, so last year, Girls Hack Village uh, had a very successful village. It's, um, it was run by Black Girls Hack. And I spoke twice in the village. It was packed every time. If you ask people who are familiar with that wing of the villages, I mean, it was like a sauna because it was, <laughs> it was a very small, they were given a very small room with a ton of people who wanted to be there. Um, and, and it was reason, far away. And it was far away because we were next to you and we were the crypto oh. village, like way in the middle of nowhere. So you had to walk to get there. So, well, Okay, so because I was staying in the Flamingo for me, it was like super close, so I don't remember <laughs> it, it there. But um, but for reasons that I don't fully understand or know, that Girls Hack Village was not invited back to DEF CON despite ha their, uh, like having a packed standing room only the entire time. So I, I don't know how, I, I want a better understanding of how hard defcon is trying to you know to make changes um it is because that that affected me personally i'm i'm a board member of uh, black girls hack and said i spoke there last year um i don't know if enough is being done and it just seems like every year there's another village so you were kind of saying before like you know if there were five less villages i don't think i would notice you said about like a thousand less yeah. people yeah there there's just they keep growing and i think it they're kind of th everything's getting thinned out a little bit um you know they're, di they're they're diluting the talent is basically uh what's happening so yeah that that's why you know i think it's almost like one year you have to decide i'm just going to do villages this year <laughs> and then maybe next year you actually go to like big talks or something so I mean, let me oh, Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so with the time we have remaining, I just want to tell people, if you're a first timer, what, what, what you should, oh, I mean, right. we talk about this every, every year. So obviously the first thing you want to do is what they call line con. You want to stand in line. You want to go there at 6 a.m., be there really early on uh, Thursday morning with your money in hand. It's like $450 cash, bring cash, 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 cash. And you want to stand in line. The goal is, I mean, like we're talking about, this is a social game and you can always watch the talks later. You can always do that. Bring cash, stand online, enjoy the beach balls, enjoy the pure, utter stupidity that goes on. And then, and then focus on enjoying yourself. Don't rush to see a talk. Um, go to that first talk, which is if you've been to DEF CON before, is really stupid. It's like, welcome to DEF CON. You only need to hear it once, but if it's your first time there, then just talk to everyone. If someone says hi to you, say hi back. Go yeah. if you remember your first days in college when you all went to the dorm dinners together, go do that. Um, I think it was like Saturday night of my first year. I finally met up with a group of guys. And we are now still best friends from there. And now oh, I'm wow. meeting them again. So it's it's like, this is our one time a year to meet each other, even though it's, I mean, I have friends in New York that we just much rather meet in Vegas just because we're there and it's easier. So do that. If you want to keep things cheap, I mean, get off the strip. So make make a point to get off the strip, take a taxi, take well, a I, ride. I think at this point, everybody probably has their stuff yeah. booked. So maybe we should do more like, advice about once you're there oh. like it's, it's yeah. july 26 i think people are you know there's really you're no correct. cheap option at this point it's, it's too late for that so um yeah like, like but like you said yeah say hi to people talk to people um you know yeah figure out is something going to be recorded then maybe go to something like uh you know one of those types of talks that there's no recording allowed you know uh, i i'm sorry i'm blanking on the name well, it's Sky Talks, but they're out this year because. But yeah, I was gonna say yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so black black girls hack because of the the ish the snub, uh, girls hack village now created Squad Con, uh, which I think Sky Talks is a part of, or maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm I'm not clear on some of these details, but 
but SquadCon is a thing that is happening, uh, and that is going to be in Vegas at the same time as all this stuff. So that's something that people can go do. Um, you know, you don't you don't need a burner phone. Uh, the things that that I I hated when I was a newbie, the the scary stuff that people would tell me either intentionally because I guess they thought it was funny to scare a newbie, or unintentionally because they didn't know any better. But I mean, I had one woman say to me, don't bring any credit cards, don't bring any photo ID, don't bring all, and I'm like, how am I supposed to fly across the country without any ID? How am I supposed to check into a hotel without a credit card? And and she was at, like, I mean, again, if she was trying to prank me, but all it did was just make me so anxious and nervous to the point my husband actually said to me at one point, he was like, should you even be going to this? He's like, it sounds really dangerous. Now, in, hi- you know, in hindsight, I laugh about that, knowing what it's like. But that's the impression so many people gave me that it was like it was like a street fight <laughs> is what people made it sound like. And that's. You know, so I went to Vegas, like, full of nerves and anxiety because I'm like, oh, my God, what is awaiting me here? So, yeah. Yeah, don't connect to DEF CON Open, which is their open Wild West network. Connect to their secure DEF CON. And if you want to know whether that's secure or not, they're putting their corporate infrastructure on that secure network with the greatest network people that there are. So if that goes down, uh, it's going to be the hack of the century. And DEF CON's going to be pissed. So, yeah. so the, 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 I think one of the best tips I learned, and I've seen other people say this now too, is um, turn your phone off or put in airplane mode if you're not actively using it. Um, and I thought that was a great idea because, you know, yeah, if you're not looking at your phone, you're not going to see things like your signal bouncing around off the stingrays and, <laughs> you know, the stingers and all that. Um, so, Again, that made me feel more comfortable of like, okay, and I like I would tell my husband ahead of time, like, okay, I'm not going to be, you know, reachable at some points because for safety, I'm going to turn my phone off. So he would know to just like leave a message and that I would, you know, and that I would check things periodically. Uh, so I tell people that um, the buddy system is very important. Now, it's important for everyone, but specifically speaking to women traveling alone, um, you know, having a roommate is helpful. Um, what I always do with my husband, if you have a significant other or a friend or somebody who's not in Vegas with you, I will text my husband when I leave the room for the day. Like, okay, you know, especially with the time difference, it's not like I'm waking him up. It's, you know, three hours uh, uh, later there. But I let him know when I'm leaving the room in the morning or when I'm like, I'm in for the night. And for me, that's just a safety thing. That's not, you know, I, I know I've mentioned that to some people and it's like, like, I don't, my, you know, my best friend doesn't need to know where I am. All, I'm like, for me, it's safety. I, you know, I, I want somebody to know where I am in case God forbid something happens. Uh, so I, I encourage people to do, to do that, to have someone that you trust at home or, you know, or so, and I say, and the reason why I say someone not in Vegas is because they're going to be busy with their own stuff. Um, so if you know if you message someone at home you know they're just going to be making sure you know you're you're okay so um i'm i'm thankful that i haven't had any anything too crazy happen to me there but you know getting drinks spiked is a real thing um you know you don't don't accept a drink from a stranger or you know, accept a drink from the bartender like while you're there watching it and i hate that i have to say this but these things still happen um I know I'm going to sound like a fuddy-duddy, but uh, I live by the rule that nothing good ever happens after midnight. (laughs) So (laughs) I am totally fine being in my hotel room in Vegas. You know, still, like, I still go do an event. You know, I was saying that, like, I know I was mocking people for who say they just stay in their hotel room. This is still, I'm talking, like, maybe 9 or 10 at night. I'll, you know, I'll still go to an event. But I'm not out in the wee hours of the morning because that's usually when I hear the next morning of of all the crazy stuff that went down. And I'm like, I am just looking at my Twitter feed, looking at everybody getting into a mess. (laughs) And, you know, that's that's a good safety tip, too. I want to add support at DEFCON.com. 
and all the goons. So the goons wear red shirts. They're like the security yes. of it. They're all, I don't want to say trained, but if there is a problem, you can reach out to them. And now, yes. now here's the caveat. Sometimes the goons are the problem. I'm not, I mean, there have been, but, uh, but they've been, they've made strides. They've made strides on doing that. But all the, the tips that you're saying applies to every, I mean, that, that doesn't just apply to DEF CON, but have oh, someone yeah, you yeah, trust. Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. I will say that the cryptography and privacy village at the very end of the flamingo, after you walk and you're like, there's no more walking and you walk some more. We're really nice people. If you find me yeah. there, I will, I will invite you to whatever we do because I always like more the merrier. Uh, stick to the DEF CON parties. I mean, the, the sponsored parties at the, the forum, they have every night, they have like an eight or nine o'clock, sh not show, but activity that's really good. And then, like you said, it's the after midnight that gets a little hairy and, and what's going on. And, and if you're like newly 21 and just remember Vegas, Vegas doesn't sleep and it's always open and there's always something to do. Just remember that, that, that. Just remember your self-care and your mental health and everything else. Yeah. Oh, um, for sure. There's so many physical things to be concerned about. I mean, you need to stay hydrated. Um, you know, the the air, the dry air conditioned air, and then the dry outside air. Um, this is I, I every year I try to give a, a pre Vegas webinar of no before you go. I did one a couple weeks ago. Uh, I try to do it. Um, a month to six weeks before the conference to give people time to buy all the things that I recommend. Um, so yeah, and I, well, I said on this year's call, I said, I don't care how cute your shoes are. They're not appropriate for hacker summer camp because you're going to be walking, you're going to be standing, you, you know, like I, I, I don't care how cute your shoes are. <laughs> you know, um, this is, you know, not a time. And oh, the one other thing I was going to mention too is I've actually had people ask me, do I need to wear black? Like they think there's like, you know, a dress code of wearing black. And I understand why they think that because, of, and I'm sitting here, I realize I'm wearing a black top. The bottom is floral, okay? The bottom's floral. Yeah, we're all wearing black. I know. But I have floral, I swear. Um, and like, yeah, it's kind of funny at first, but then I think about it, I'm like, yeah, that's the message we're sending out as a community that you're only a hacker, you know, if you wear black and wear a hoodie. So, um, and you said, and you said about the goons. So I, my first, uh, DEF CON, I was wearing a pink top and a floral skirt and I was walking down, you know, Caesar somewhere and a bunch of the goons were like, oh, are you lost? Are you, are you go, are you supposed to be at the, uh, Tupperware convention? And, uh, long story short, I used that as a way to get into to talks because I was like, I'm lost. I don't know where I am. This is before people knew who I was. I can't get away with that now. But um, <laughs> but yeah, and and that's what I, I tell people. I'm like, dress for your comfort. You know, it's a million degrees there, so that's why I wore something light and something floral and something flowy. And you know, yeah, people didn't think I belonged there, but then I used that to my advantage in other ways. Uh, so I just I just want less of this like. You know, you have to do this. You have to drink hard. You have to wear all black. You have to. No, it's a conference. Like, show up. Be comfortable. You know, be yourself. You know, just don't don't be a jerk. Just that I I can't stress that enough. But there is this history of, and I'm not picking on DEF CON. There's a history of hacker conferences that is a little wild, and I think some people are still clinging to that, and it kind of sends the wrong message to some of the uh, up and coming youngsters. I'm going to end it with, there's going to be lots of badges for sale. You don't need to buy them all. It's like the <laughs> Mickey Mouse ears. It's only cool for those four days and they're really expensive. They're awesome. They're works of art, but just, just yeah. prioritize your money. Don't be like what Tracy said in the beginning. Uh, <laughs> the, they're, we're going to win our money back. Cause you're not. Yeah. It's, yeah. Don't do that. So. Um, I, I do have, I don't, I, don't have it near me, I don't think. But one, my favorite souvenir from DEF CON is I have a pink DEF CON hat, and I love it. And people always ask me where I got it. I don't think they sell them anymore because I, I think I got it in 2016. Um, but the, yes, the one one of the comments I got was a guy said to me, 
oh you oh you bought that or said something like oh did your did your boyfriend buy that for you at defcon and i was like mf her i bought it myself <laughs> at defcon <laughs> And it was like, oh, oh, you just got pink because you're a girl. No, I got pink because I like pink, okay? <laughs> so I'm sharing these stories for anyone listening to do the opposite of that. You know, if you see a woman at a, at a hacker conference wearing a lanyard that says speaker, she's a speaker. <laughs> if she's wearing pink, she might just like the color pink. If she's wearing black, she just might like wearing black. Like if we can stop a lot of these weird assumptions and weird questions, it'll make things a lot better socially at, at any hacker event. No, I, anyway. I got this, uh, this pink app from winning CTF. Why did you not get one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous. Some of the questions I've been asked or I've heard other women you know, tell me like people like, oh, that's nice. You're setting up the laptop for your boyfriend who's about to give this talk. Like, <laughs> what? Like, look, I'm happy that you're saying these stories because because I don't get those, and I understand why I don't get those. Um, and and that's really important to not be a dick. Like, don't be a jerk there. Just be nice to people. There, you're all there. You all started from presumably nothing, and. And this imposter syndrome has to go. We're all there for the same goal to have fun, to learn something. But with that said, I, I do yes. want to end because we are over our time. Yes. And I'm going to let Tracy tell us where we can find her or where <laughs> we can't find her or anything like that or whatever she wants to promote. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes. Thank you for having me on again. If you are going out to Las Vegas, please have a safe, uh, just a really fulfilling trip. It is a great experience. Uh, just, but go in with a positive attitude. Uh, you can find me on most social media as Infosec Sherpa. Um, there's a couple of them that I just keep private because I need to have something private in my, in my life. Uh, but yeah, um, Infosec Sherpa and pretty much on Linktree, on uh, you know any other social media. And yeah, and I do a newsletter that's daily-ish. Uh, with a roundup of news stories and I'm available for weddings, bar, bat mitzvahs, whatever to, uh, to talk about what, what to just talk about things. <laughs> and, and I will say I'm at, I will be at the crypto village. If you need cryptography, cause crypto means cryptography at the very end of the flamingo. Cryptozoology. And, <laughs> well, <laughs> as long as we're, as long as we're not mining Bitcoin, we are good. And uh, if you need a friend, you need someone to talk to, I promise you we are very nice there. And and I don't want to commit to dragging you around for four days, but maybe two of them. So if you want, if you want someone to go get lunch or dinner or whatever with, I'm there and you can say hi. So with that said, I guess I'm going to leave it to Tom to, to – we're done, Tom, right? Take us I out. I, I do want to warn you, if you do visit the Crypto and Privacy Village, they're going to try to get you to use Signal. They're going to try to get you to use Tor. So they're friendly, but you're going to have a new app installed on your phone. At just yeah, it's that prepare is true. for it. So And that's it. That's all I've got. And the nerve Wait. of them. The nerve. I know, the right? Yeah. Nerve. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have any Telegram talks this year. We usually... <laughs> We usually prioritize all the telegram, the anti-telegram talks because we <laughs> because we are not a fan. So I don't think we have any this year. Might as well just bring a literal literal carrier pigeon in yeah. to give a talk because it's like the same <laughs> level of security. Yeah. All right. With with that said, we're gonna go. <laughs> I'll see we'll see everyone probably not in two weeks, but you can say hi to me at DEFCON. And when we're back, we're back. So bye everybody. Bye. See you, everyone.